have you ever met a person who you can just you feel their essence when they walk into a room whether you know them or not you're like oh that person has a quote vibe and yeah it's not a judgment that you're passing on somebody you just kind of get this feeling that's probably coming from your clear senses it's probably your intuition giving you some information about them whether you want to get to know them or not and i think that's where you get to the point like am i hyper vigilant and getting this just because i'm like very observant or is it intuition and i do think that there is definitely a blend there when we're in our regular um awareness like day-to-day -day awareness where we can explore that more is when we intentionally enter into a state of passive receptivity Hey gang, this week's episode of Can I Just Say, I share the mic with Emily O'Neill. Emily is a psychic medium and our conversation was incredibly insightful. As somebody who only really tapped into the idea of learning about spirituality more in the last couple of years, I really wish I had known Emily sooner because she does such a great job of explaining what she does in a way that really isn't woo-woo because the reality is that spirituality is about a deeper connection with ourselves and the universe around us. I found our conversation to be incredibly thoughtful and also just really fun and dynamic. The way that Emily explains her journey through spirituality and understanding her gifts more was something that sparked a lot of interest on my end and has really invited me to learn more about what it means to tap into those spiritual gifts, trust our intuition, and invite more conversations around these things into our lives. So if you are someone who might be a little bit skeptical yourself about spirituality, I really recommend listening to this because I think you'll get a lot out of it. So let's dive in. I will tell you what, what I said to you last week, I feel like there's probably a reason that like we're not recording today, whatever, who knows what it'll be or mm -hmm. what it is. And I, I do feel like there is um, the last week has been something where I have been recognizing how much more I want to be intentional about connecting spiritually. And mm -hmm. my wife has had a couple of moments where she's, you know, really deeply connecting and sharing these meditative experiences with mm -hmm. me. And it really just sort of amplified my excitement around this topic and to yeah. be able to like ask you some more questions about who you are and what you do and how you've cultivated, um, you know, as you refer to it, sort of your extrasensory capabilities. And yeah, I'm really happy to have you here to chat about it. Well, it's my favorite thing to talk about. So there won't <laughs> be any problem with the chatting. <laughs> Perfect. Well, and you're so easy to talk to. You know, I it was I was looking um, at your pod match profile and I love just sort of the way that you show up um, is in in written form explaining what you do and who you are and how how you, you know, embrace what you do. And it's exactly who you are when when I speak to you, I feel like it is so easy. You have such a gentle um, demeanor that is also very informative. And mm -hmm. so it's like the perfect balance of how I can receive information with like the comfort and the warmth that I want to feel talking to somebody. Oh, good. I'm glad that makes me feel good because I do. I mean, I, I put effort into that. I want to try to show up, you know, online or however, in a way that's authentic and does yeah. reflect who I am and what my values are as a person and you just never know because <laughs> it's me looking at my stuff. I'm like, as that, <laughs> that that's, seems right. that's who people. I am. That's like, who I, I think, am. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I constantly go back and do refine it because I've been through a lot of been through a lot over the last couple of years, as I think a lot of us have, and things have definitely changed for me and I've had to do some reevaluating. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, perhaps that's sort of a, a place where we can jump off uh, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, how long have you, I guess, been in touch with your extrasensory abilities? So mm -hmm. um, you're a psychic medium. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Is that how? Yeah. I call myself an evidential psychic medium because it's sort of a new phrase. And I use the word evidential because I want people to know that I'm going to bring forward information that can be validated. Mm, I and love that. so you'll see a lot of people who are psychic mediums 
not do that or put themselves in an environment where they prob- they might be tapped in and they might be bringing forward information that's maybe it is true, but it's not a situation where the information can be validated as such. Yeah. So, so can you give me an example of like what that, what that would be for somebody? <laughs> okay. Um, where the way I see it happening a lot is people will be like, I'm channeling this spirit energy, or maybe it's a deity. Maybe mm-hmm. you are, but, and you're giving forward information, but nobody can tell validate if that's true. Cause nobody knows right. the deity. Nobody's met, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or, it is truly like you have to hone in on the belief and the faith that that is true. Yeah. And, it, and, you know, and I think that, 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 that can be problematic for a couple of reasons, but, and then the other one I see a lot is channeling like dead historical figures or, um, celebrities that have passed away and without mm-hmm. the consent of their family or friends, people will go online and do that and say like the most recent one I saw a ton of was like Matthew Perry. And so psychic mediums were going on and mm. be like, I have Matthew Perry and here's what he's saying from the other side. Nobody can validate that. His yeah. friends and family didn't consent to that. And to me, that's unethical and, and kind of a violation of trust. And it doesn't exemplify the type of work that I would stand behind. Um, I'm not saying these people don't have the skill and ability as psychics and mediums. Probably they do. It's just the way that they put it on display and in ways that I think don't align with my personal values and, you know, fair enough. Um, but those things tend to be really popular, particularly on, on like TikTok and stuff like that. And it disturbs me. Well, I, that's really interesting too, to think about, because I, I feel like f- the idea of sort of the ab- abuse of that power, so to speak, um, yeah. if, if, it, if it's, if it's true, right. Mm-hmm. Um, there's sort of this ethical conundrum that you're speaking to that mm-hmm. as somebody who doesn't have this ability, or at least hasn't honed this ability, um, like wouldn't even consider. And then there's the flip side of it too, where um, you know, people want to believe what they want to believe. And yeah. so if somebody's putting it out there, then yeah. people will, will glom onto it and be yeah. like, oh, well, I, I saw this or I heard this. And, yeah. it's, and whether it's related to spirituality or anything else at this point on the internet, yeah. like I, <laughs> attempt to try to validate it. So mm-hmm. what, um, I guess, how, how do you actually provide some form of evidence that like Mm -hmm. what you're doing is, is truly connected in the way that you do? Well, the most, I mean, it's actually pretty simple is you, you put, put yourself in an environment where you can get information that can be validated. And the way that I do that is when I work with clients or with the public, um, it's somebody that I've never met and that I don't know. There's no way they could have given me the information. I don't ask them for pictures. I don't ask them for names. I don't ask them for any information. And I I meet with them. I do education before we begin the reading. So I'll tell them like the way the process will work, how I need them to respond to me, if they've ever had a reading or an experience before, we take a deep breath together, get all on the same page because it's really important for me to be connected with my sitter, who is the person I'm reading for, as well as whoever is coming through for them in spirit. And once I make a link to the spirit communicator, I'll just start giving them information and then I'll pause and say, "Can you? does that make sense to you? And they'll either say yes, no, or I don't, I don't know. And a lot of times if it's, I don't know, more information will come and then they'll be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So, Mm. and I might get some no's where they're like, I can't understand that. And that's just part of the process. Um, Well, can I ask a question real mm -hmm. quick? Um, Mm -hmm. So I've only been to a medium once. It was a gift from my in-laws and and my wife. Mm -hmm. Uh, So spirituality, as I mentioned to you when we originally spoke, is something that I would say I'm fairly new to in the sense of like how I'm exploring it more and I'm much more open-minded to it. So I grew up um, raised Catholic. I don't, yeah. be, I don't believe organized religion. I actually have like a fundamental issue with it. I, you know, people are entitled to their beliefs as with spirituality, as with anything, yeah. but for me, it just doesn't jive. Right. And so when I lost my mom, spirituality, like right before, in fact, I think it was becoming more important to me, yeah. but especially after losing my mom, you really crave that connection and that ability to yeah. be like, how can I remain in touch with you in some way? Oh, yeah. And so when I went to this medium, I think she must have some sort of similar practice to what you do in the way yeah. that you're asking and inviting. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I'm curious, like when you're, when you're doing that and somebody says, mm-hmm. I don't know, mm-hmm. have people ever sort of come back and said that they have like thought about it or gained more information after the fact, and then were able to validate something? Yep. Oh yeah, for sure. And sometimes that validation happens like within a matter of days or weeks. And sometimes mm-hmm. it happens in years because oh, you can crazy. bring forward a piece of information that won't make sense for years. And for me, having gotten readings, cause obviously I get them, uh, that's happened to me where something I could, I, someone said something to me like 20 years ago. I mean that long ago. Wow. And I held, and, you know, I was like, whatever, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I don't yeah, know what I you're we'll talking see. about. <laughs> and then way down the line, when I got to this period in my life, I'm like, Oh my God, that's exactly what <laughs> she mentioned to me. And it was years. So the way that I kind of approach those things is I tell people, write it down and hold it gently. Don't obsess mm. over it and don't try to make it fit. There is a little bit of magic and mystery to the process and just know that everything will come together and make sense to you when it's supposed to. If I'm yeah. doing my job right and giving you accurate information, then eventually things will fall into place. Yeah. And um, that's hard. I think that's the hard part for people when they go and get readings is sometimes they will get information and then it's like, oh, I, I have it. It's not happening yet. And I'm in this in-between space and then you kind of wonder about it. And um, fair enough, yeah, like that happens to me too. It <laughs> I, sparks I the curiosity, it. right? Yeah. And it, well, it was oh, yeah. interesting too, because when you said, I don't ask people for photos, like I don't know anything about them. I mean, this woman knew 0% about yeah. me, like nothing whatsoever. In fact, because my yeah. uh, wife's name is Nicole, she actually thought that I was the one who booked the, yeah. uh, the session. I was like, no, yeah. it's not me. So like she had no context for who I was. And yeah. Nicole had said to me, you know, like if there's something that you want to bring with you, like you don't show it, but just like bring something with you that might like make you feel more connected. And so one of my friends who passed away when I was 16, Mm -hmm. um, I have a necklace from him that I sort of like wrapped up in my hand and like stuffed it in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there and during the reading, the medium had made a comment about like he's holding something that's like, um, a, like a braided bracelet or something. And now it had the way I'd folded the necklace was like, so it would have been bracelet sized and it looks sort of like a braid. Yeah. And I was, I was like, this yeah. is, I went in being like, I'm skeptical, but I'm open because I'd never been to a medium before. So my, my process was, That's I'm healthy. Yeah. I, I'm going to allow this to be what it is and whatever the experience is, yeah. um, I can kind of allow it to unfold to your point. And mm-hmm. so when that happened, Fairly early on, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. How like I I last <laughs> minute grabbed this thing and put it in my pocket. And so mm-hmm. there was that mm-hmm. moment. And then there was another moment too where she mentioned something where it ended up being I hadn't even told her my mom had passed away. And mm-hmm. bringing her sort of forth and mentioning certain things that were like very eerily like connected to how I think her passing um mm-hmm. happened. But then she's like, she's handing you a ring. And the ring that I wear as my wedding ring is mm-hmm. a ring that I took from my mom's jewelry box. That was my mm-hmm. Nana's ring. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm sold. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. You know, there were these like little bits and pieces that going yeah. in, I was, I think, you know, when you're messaging, you speak about, you know, being skeptical or curious. And it was like, I was both of those things. And I yeah. think you kind of need a healthy balance of that when you're first exploring it. So yeah. you don't over index on like, this is what I expect to come from it. And then yeah. you're disappointed or you feel like it's not real or mm-hmm. whatever, but then also that you can, you know, appreciate the the mm-hmm. light and the magic and the mystery, as you said. Yeah, because I feel like if you're working as a psychic medium, you're wanting to help people heal and know that that love and that connection, it doesn't ever die. And we still have access to our loved ones on the other side and they still know what's going on in our life and they're still very present yeah. and very with us. They're not physically here, but you can feel them. Like those times where a song comes on and you think of them, they're with you. When you have random memories, they're with you. Um, When you just feel like, I don't know, it's hard to put it into words, but it's like, oh my gosh, I know you're there. They can help you with things and support you in ways that they never could when they were in life. That's the other thing I've learned. It's like, wow in a lot of ways they see me or you or life very differently since they passed in the capacity for love and empathy and compassion. It expands profoundly. 
Mm, that's so true. And I love that you phrased it that way too. Nicole had said to me when I would have these really hard times and her friend, uh, well, one of our friends, Kayla, who's also like very, um, mm -hmm. you know, connected and, and intentional about being uh, connected spiritually, like they were both like, but your mom, like it, it's different mm -hmm. now, but she's mm -hmm. there and in like a, in a, to your point, sort of a bigger way because yeah. there's so much more capacity for it. And uh -huh. it was a really helpful part of my healing journey to embrace that yeah. rather than to feel the resistance of just, she's gone. I don't have any of that. And mm -hmm. it's funny because Nicole will say to me, like you sit, so many things remind you of your mom. And I'm like, mm -hmm. this would make total sense given her personality. Like, Cause she's like, there's no way you're forgetting. Like you're just not mm -hmm. going to, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. I'm here. It's that song. It's that, you know, thing mm -hmm. that I taught you, the flower that you remember mm -hmm. the name of like those little bits and pieces. And yeah. So whether that's, you know, in the way we think of it, it's, it's, oh, spirit's there in this moment. It's also, I think the way that we hold on to, as you said, it's, it's a feeling that they're there. And for me, like, I really feel like when I connect, it's very energetic. Like I feel it in my body. Yeah. And so there's a lot that like comes forth for me when I do sit with the quiet and I open myself up to more um, oh gosh, connection. Yeah. It's like very, like a very physical sensation for me. It is physical. Um, I always tell people that I have a very physical job. <laughs> it's yeah. Well, it wears you out too, from what Nicole said, because she's getting more into her own practice mm -hmm. and she's just like, it's draining. Sometimes I feel like it, it, I wouldn't say that I ever feel drained by it, but it's more of like, um, I have to take good care of myself to be able mm. to do the, do the work. I think we all need to do that. But I mean, I do need, I exercise, I try to eat good and not stay up too late and do things like that. Cause it doesn't make it harder. You know, if you're worn out or stressed out to do the work, because the whole mm. idea is that you become passive and receptive. So if you're having troubles, that can be hard to do. Um, so in that way, there's ch some challenge and like, I need to be in the right mindset physically available, things like that. So I have to set aside my life, what's going on in my life completely. It has to be off to the side so that I can focus on helping the person that I'm working with. So in that way, I find challenge. But in terms mm. of like getting tired or exhausted, that happens to me when I'm like doing my meditation practices and it is revealed to me through those practices. I get a little help from some spirit guides sometimes of, th of my own personal internal wounds mm. and my own self work that I need to do. And so I always say for people who are intuitive, which we all are, we just have to cultivate the skill set, right? Um, if that's happening, there's probably a big personal evolution that's coming and there's something coming through you that wants mm. to be seen. <laughs> and that yeah. probably has to do with some of the more complicated or uncomfortable things in your life or things that you've experienced. And yeah. um, it's nothing to be afraid of at, at all. Um, but it does mean take good care of yourself. <laughs> like do if you're tired, do get that rest. And like you said, it's physical. So through the body, feeling into the signals that your body is giving you and being able to describe the sensations and be present with them and actually interact with them. Um, like, why are you here? Like, why do I have this sensation? Why am I feeling tired after these other things come up? Because the answers will come. It will just come. I don't, it just, it just, so, if you're able to wait for the answer and like be very, very present in the moment, you'll, it will be revealed to you what's going on. Mm, I really appreciate that explanation. I I just, I love that we're having this conversation because yeah. I feel like you speak to all these things in such a really um, accessible way. And it's something that I feel like as someone who was, when I say I was skeptical, when I went to the medium the first time, that was mm -hmm. like, I'd acknowledge that I know what I'm going to. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do this. I wouldn't have selected to do this myself. And I'm glad that I was encouraged mm -hmm. to do it, invited mm -hmm. to do it, I should say, um, because I'm really, I, it was a great experience for me to have. But what I think, um, you know, something that you said around, we're all intuitive. We all have that, like we can cultivate it. Yeah. I was talking to Nicole this morning and I said, do you have any like questions that <laughs> would be good for me to ask? Because like you're, you're really trying to understand more and harness mm -hmm. more and grow this. And she said, if you can ask Emily, how can you tell if mm -hmm. it's like spirit mm -hmm. or you, like, how mm -hmm. do you trust, how do you trust that? 
because she's like, I feel like I know, Mm -hmm. but there's this part of me that has some doubt. And I remember when we first spoke, you sharing, I think a little bit about that on your own journey. Yeah, it certainly does take practice. Um, And I would say to you that um, it's different for everybody how you kind of suss that out. Um, It's a very unique process to each individual, but essentially the tools and techniques that one can apply, everybody can use. Mm -hmm. So for me, I know the way my mind is and I know (laughs) when it's engaged because of my familiarity with my mind. Like Mm -hmm. for me, I know what the difference between a thought and like a psychic message or like a message from spirit, but that came from practicing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always tell people that um, like working in community to develop the skill set so helpful because you can practice on each other. (laughs) You can practice like getting psychic messages or intuitive messages and you can practice connecting with spirit communicators and work on each other. And then you learn, Oh, that was my mind coming in versus this was information that I was receiving from my Claire senses or a spirit communicator or both or elsewhere. And I would say that, um, for me, um, my mind is an analytical process oriented mind that wants to put the pieces together and give me an answer. And mm-hmm. my intuition is not going to do is not that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like it's very yeah. different, has a very different feeling. And to- I call it a tone because you know how music notes or chords resonate yeah. in your body so does this information. So I know Mm. the tone of my mind and how that feels running through my body. I know the tone of my psychism and mediumship and my intuition. I know what that feels like and I know the difference. Um, And it took practice for me to do that. And I didn't always have a community to practice with. So I had to... um, kind of learn the hard way like most of us do. And I I think the thing that was really helpful for me was having an intuitive nudge, ignoring it, and then wishing I hadn't ignored yeah, it. Yeah. And that's how I learned. It was like, oh, I can trust that, those nudges. I know what they feel like. I know that they come for a reason. And I mean, the other thing I would say is reflecting on those times where you kind of did have a knowing and ignored it. It's not a way to like be mean to yourself. It's like, why didn't I listen? That's Hmm. something to evaluate too, because we do have to build trust with our inner guidance system and our intuition. We have to believe that it exists. We have to believe that we can rely on it. And the truth is it's there all the time and it will never fail you. It won't. It's in, it's just this intact. I think it's just this inherent thing that is within all of us. It's our mind, and our behaviors, and our trauma, and everything we've been through that can get in the way of that. And there's a lot yeah. of valid reasons why people have a hard time connecting with your intuition. I just had a conversation with a friend about this. If you're having to live in survival mode every day, I'm not saying your intuition can't come in, but it's you're trying to survive, right? So that's your primary focus. So uh, most of your awareness is wrapped around surviving. Yeah. Well, we need to be in a passive and receptive state to really get tapped in. And so if we're fight, flight, fawn, freeze are consuming us, then it can be harder to connect with that. Um, I'm not saying it would be impossible. I've definitely experienced intuitive nudges in moments of deep stress, for sure it can happen. But I mean, if you're wanting to like, I'm going to tap in now and you're in that mode, it's going to be a little bit more, more challenging as this would be challenging to do a lot of things when you're having to be in that state. So I think it, I think that that's kind of a, a factor too. So yeah, um, but the that's reality is it's, it's not that, it's not that hard to do the, the, the tools. It's us that makes it hard. Does that make sense? Like, like yeah. everything in life. We yeah, sure. right. Our innate humanness just like screws with us <laughs> yeah. to the point where we like can't trust it. I hate that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you said a lot of things there that I really appreciate, Emily. And I feel like the first is sort of that sense of um, when you when you get the nudge and you you kind of know that there's something going on. Um, I used to always think that I I would always say I had a really 
good gut instinct for when bad things were going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like I was just like, I, I like knew before I knew. Mm-hmm. And, um, now what was hard for me as I came out of a very traumatic relationship was being yeah. like, what of that was hypervigilance? Yes. And, and, and what of that was intuition? And I think at times it was a combination of both to your point, yep. but I can tell you with, a lot of assurance that when I was finally in a place of peace, and it's funny because even talking to you about this now, my body goes into the place of remembering the anxiety, the stress, yeah. all of that stuff and being like, I couldn't, I couldn't connect with anything. I stopped dreaming. Like for yeah. probably two years, I wasn't even dreaming. And yeah. I forgot how vivid and it, like elaborate my dreams could be. Yeah. And then once I was like finally at peace and I'm in the comfort of mm-hmm. a home with somebody that I love and I feel like at ease, everything starts flowing in again. Right. And so I think in that regard, there's this feeling of your subconscious can kind of like deactivate when you're in that stage of Mm -hmm. uh, fight, flight, freeze, fawn, like you said, and that's not scientifically being like your subconscious is deactivating. That is not a scientific claim at all, but it's like that feeling of it can't be as engaged or in touch because you're so like tunnel vision on whatever it is that you're navigating. Mm -hmm. And I feel like- Your nervous system is activated. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. And I feel like that was one of the things where it was probably a big contributing factor into why I could get more in touch with my sense of spirituality. I was being yeah. invited by the circumstances in my life to to give more space to that. And mm-hmm. I was open to it, but it was like I had the ability to be there and be present and have the capacity to explore it um, so that I could learn to trust certain things that I was getting. Yeah. Um, now, I don't, I wouldn't say like, I, I don't see myself as somebody, at least at this juncture, who channels in any way, but mm-hmm. um, I do feel like th- I understand a bit about, you said the clairs, right? And you mm-hmm. said whether it's like sort of your your clair senses or um, connecting with spirit. So I would have considered those sort of to be the same thing thing is mm-hmm. what is it is it different because like one sort of your perception and and the way that you're gathering the information the other is more like actually feels some sort of like message in a way um that's actually probably a really good question so our clair senses are the language of the unseen world and how we connect to it part of how we mm-hmm. connect to it the like this like if we're talking about spirit or spirit communication Spirit is spirit, right? It's the entity or the energy that we connect with through those senses. And we they give us information through this language. I think of it as mm. a whole language um, yeah. because it's not like you might get some words, you might get some images, but you really get a sense like through your body of a feeling like I feel like I all of a sudden need to talk about a goldfish and you don't know why yeah. or I'm I'm getting this image and it's get this feeling and I think I think um you can feel spirit energy draw close to you too um that's the another thing and an example I give to people is go sit next to a tree like feel you can feel the energy of a tree like you can feel it um we can, nature is a great way to help to cultivate your connection to the unseen world and the language of it. Cause you can, you can feel, you can kind of feel the, the energy of animals or like, you know, a crow has a different essence than a hummingbird, because if you observe them and you, f- it's not just your mind seeing that you can feel that they have a different feel to them. That's, and that's, such, a good, that's such a good analogy too. Because yeah, like, like, I feel essence. like mm-hmm. I see both of those quite often where yeah. we live and I feel like there's a lightness, there's an airiness, there's sort of like mm-hmm. a fairy-esque nature mm-hmm. to a hummingbird and a crow. It's like inherently sort of this like darker, more intense like presence mm-hmm. and not just in color, obviously. And it's funny because for a long time, I think I felt like a little bit resistant to crows because of mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And then I learned how smart they are. And I feel mm-hmm. like it changed my vibe a little bit. I was like, yeah. they're they're up to stuff. I feel like they yeah. they know things. <laughs> And have you ever met a person who you can just, you feel their essence when they walk into a room, whether you know them or not, you're like, oh, that person has a quote vibe. And yeah. it's not a judgment that you're passing on something. You just kind of get this feeling that's probably coming from your clear senses. It's probably your intuition giving you some information about them, whether you want to get to know them or not. Yeah. And people used to always say, Emily, you're so judgmental. I'm like, 
I'm just, I'm just, I'm just picking up on the vibes. I'm, so really, yeah, just read, I'm not passing judgment on anybody. I'm just like, oh, I can. And I, you know, I, I mean, like I could tell, like I could read a room. Like I don't, I don't, you don't have to tell me anything. I'm a very observant. I think that's where you get to the point. Like, am I hypervigilant and getting this just cause I'm like very observant or is it intuition? And I do think that there is definitely a blend there when we're in yeah. our regular um, awareness, like day-to-day awareness where we can explore that more is when we intentionally enter into a state of passive receptivity. You keep using this phrase and I really want to tap into that because yes. like I, I wrote it down when you said it the first time and I was like a passive and receptive state. Okay. So like, what does that look like? So I like to use the analogy of the circle of awareness. So what, okay. this really helped me. So in my normal day-to-day life and within my awareness, which I think of as a sphere, I've got my to-do list. I've got to take care of the animals. I've got my job. Like I'm doing, I'm active. I'm plant going through my day. So my sphere of awareness is sort of full of day-to-day tasks, things like Mm -hmm. that. My worries for the world, all that stuff. Yeah. When I sit in meditation or when I'm working, that sphere of awareness, I clear it out and I become passive and receptive so that I can receive. So what can comes into my sphere of awareness is the messages for the person that I'm working with or for myself if I'm just like, you know, trying to help myself out with yeah, <laughs> with yeah. some intuitive work and um my energy so my awareness goes beyond like this my body like it kind of expands the edges of my body soften and it kind of broadens out to fill the room yeah it gets bigger and i can feel it getting bigger like i could do i'm talking about it and i'm like here it goes yeah <laughs> my awareness <laughs> is expanding i'm talking myself into this passive and receptive state and it's really interesting cuz um when they study mediums brains which i think is really cool i they think that's see awesome that are, that mediums when they're working or doing their brains start engaging in all these different places so are they like places that are sort of different than like where you are activated in a day-to-day basis yes very different they don't i don't think they know what it means yet but they do study (laughs) mediums brains all the time trying to figure out like well how do you do that oh that's fascinating i didn't even i didn't of all the things that i google it never once occurred to me that i should ask that now i'm like more answers please (laughs) i think there's an institute called i hope i'm accurate about this the Windbridge institute a okay, woman I'll had an out. experience with a medium and then she's like i'm studying this i want to figure out how this works That's and cool. so it's a non-profit that's sort of um trying to using the scientific process i is, as i understand it study mediums and um kind of understand more about how it works i don't want to be a conspiracy theorist or anything but i feel like the government has studied this stuff i know that different governments across the world have and have used psychics and mediums to solve crimes and that's a thing um they don't talk like you don't talk about it are there shows about yes there are and should be (laughs) yeah there's kind of rules around how that works and stuff like that like if people hire psychics and mediums to solve crimes or do different things it's like kept on the dl and i think I would assume one would need particular training around that and like solving cold cases that have been closed. I think that's where they might bring them in. But yeah, there's all kinds of like different pathways for how this skill and ability can be used. And obviously my primary emphasis is like, you don't have to be a professional psychic and medium medium to use these skill sets to make your life more full. You can just use them to enhance your spiritual practices and self-care practices. Well, I love that that's how you think about it. I feel like that's one of the things that like really felt so connective. Uh, when you talk about somebody just sort of having a vibe, I feel like you have a vibe and it's this like very, as I said, warm, but it's like, it's very intentional and intellectual about w- what you're doing, why you're doing it and how you can communicate that to people. And mm-hmm. what I feel is so valuable in part about what you're doing, because there's so much value in it is that like, to even just be aware of some of these things that tie it back to sort of like, well, what's the actual thing that's happening in the brain of a medium, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's really important for people to feel 
because this is how I would say, like, in my own experience, I needed there to be some sort of way for me to validate a little bit. Yeah. What am I hearing? What am I feeling? Like, is this accurate from what somebody's giving me or from what I'm witnessing or how I'm experiencing things? I think when you know that there's like a little bit of intention even to research, to understand, to be like, it's viable, right? Like, these are things that people mm -hmm. use. As you said, this is a tool that somebody mm -hmm. can use in their everyday life or in a variety of ways to benefit yeah. each other. And yeah. I feel like we need to find, um, or not we need to find, I think that we're in a place in time right now where because people are more receptive to it, it's opening up a lot of opportunity to have more dialogues that people mm -hmm. were very, um, I think, dismissive of or like sort of discredited. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at the things that have credibility, and I will use air quotes for anybody who's just listening, is like mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff's bullshit anyway. So like realistically, yeah, why... Why not allow, you know, the belief to be there? And if it plays out and you feel like you can validate your mm -hmm. connection to spirituality or what other people are sharing with you around spirituality, then great. But to me, when people think about it being like woo woo, I'm like, I feel so much more bought in on spirituality and the idea of mm -hmm. the universe and quantum mm -hmm. physics mm -hmm. than I could ever be about any sort of organized religion. To me, that's so much less validated. And it's not right. to like get into like a, a, a deep debate with people on this. It's just for me, truly, it's like I can buy more into the mm -hmm. sort of malleability of mm -hmm. spirituality mm -hmm. versus like the rigidity of a religion. Yeah. And I think that's really interesting. I definitely, uh, I, I don't, follow a religious practice either, although I'm familiar with many and have had exposure to many and more of a spiritual person. And I choose to derive that my connection to spirit through, through nature and through things mm -hmm. like that. But I would offer this thought, something to think about spirituality in the, like that whole realm, which is very vast. And there's a lot of different trailheads and access points to this world of quote, spirituality, just as there are to religion. They can both be used to control and manipulate people. They both can. Mm -hmm. And they can both be used to engage in spiritual and emotional bypassing. Like, I'd rather do this spiritual practice than look at what I'm doing as a person because I'm uncomfortable, that type this of thing. This is so funny. Somebody just said to me spiritual bypassing yesterday and explained it to me. Yeah. So, like, I wouldn't it's have known thing. what you were saying. So, basically, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't know what it is. I don't think... Would you oh, mind think, explaining that? that just a little bit. Sure. So it's like, um, when we use spiritual practices, tools, and techniques as a way to kind of just access quote, the spiritual self, like love and light, it's all just love and light, that kind of a vibe. And we avoid the more complicated things about the human experience. And we avoid the more complicated things about our personal experience that we need to explore so we can all evolve as a human race. So, yeah. To me, it's connected to making sure that we're not using these tools to overlook systematic oppression, that we're not using these tools to bypass our own, like for me, white supremacist stuff that's in me because I'm a white woman with privilege. I've got to always be exploring how that might be coming through my spiritual practices because let me tell you. It That's really will. Interesting. It will. And it does. Like, I am not a perfect person. I am hopelessly flawed like we all are. And I was looking at something today and it was this person that's in the spiritual community. She's very well known. She's written many books and she had this quote she posted. And I was like, huh. And it said, if anybody makes your life complicated, walk away. And I thought, that could be used as a tool of oppression rather than liberation because I've had people come in and say things to me that made my life complicated. And it was a huge learning and turning point for me mm, because yeah. they're like, M, you got to be careful with some of that stuff. I'm going to take my time to share with you some things that I know because my perspective and experience is different than you. And these people didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do that on my behalf and shared with me some of the things that were problematic about how I was showing up in certain spaces. It's like, you got, you, you, it's got to deconstruct as much as it builds us up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think spiritual bypassing is, I just want to feel good. I just want to get out of this human body. I want to get out of this complicated mess. And I would say a spiritual practice should say, dive into that. 
go into that, figure it out. Why are you doing that? Why are you feeling that way? But like, I see a lot of people using plant medicine now, which I was just thinking that. I know. Yeah. Right. I'm like, good, great. I think there are ethical ways. Maybe certain people could go about doing that, but you know, the reality is, is we got to live in the physical world and day to day life. And you can have these amazing spiritual experiences. And I've had some, I've had them, but guess what? I had to come back down to earth. I had to live my day to day life. I had to show up for the hard stuff even though I'd had this profound experience. So I think spiritual bypassing is wanting to always live in that yummy, luscious, I'm connected, all one space as a way to avoid the realities of living in the physical world. And there are some harsh realities, right? Look at what's happening in the world today. So we have to... We have to use our spiritual practices, I think, in it for making sure that we are for social justice, for liberation for all people. And what does that yeah. mean? And ancient spiritual practices, which know about psychism and mediumship, by the way, all have a component of making sure that we are looking at taking care of others as much as just ourselves. Mm. And I think that's important. Uh, for sure. And I really appreciate the way you explained that because it it speaks a lot, I think, to people, particularly like the commoditization of spirituality that's yeah. happening right now, too. I, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm I'm completely above it. I definitely no, buy into some things neither. that I'm yeah. sh- I'm sure I could easily be like, well, that's not like you don't need to be thinking like right. that or or um, maybe it's like I'm doing it more to feel good about something like I, I'm sure I'm doing my own spiritual bypassing at times. Right. Everybody but, does it to some degree. Yeah. But I think that there is this part of me that's like, you don't get to stop doing the work because you've decided you're like engaging in spiritual practice. Like there is still very much like, I think if you consider it sort of as an alternative for the other things to your point that like you need to do to be a well-functioning human, to have a regulated nervous system, like I don't think it's in your best interest as a human being to just be on like various types of, um, you know, plant medicine, drugs, whatever, all the time. So you can keep connected because then it's like, it's avoidant, it's dependent, it's sort of, yes. um, you know, creating a very limited view mm-hmm. of what like the actual picture is. And yeah. I think as with most things, if you, you know, sidestep it enough and you never confront it, like you're going to end up being confronted with that in a much, much bigger way at some point. And it's yeah. like, I I think for me in my own journey is like the balance of like, when do I feel like I'm more inclined to lean more into spirituality versus when do I feel like maybe I'm using it as a crutch because like, I want to feel safe. Yeah, fair enough. Like, I think there's that, I think that we're all doing dancing between that often. And one of the things I would (laughs) offer, you know, towards that statement is this, when I have cultivated my practice, I call it quiet time. You can call it meditation, but I'm I'm meditating. I'm in that passive and receptive state. I'm not trying to make anything happen. I'm just trying to be with me and sort of notice, acknowledge, and release what comes up because that's, mm-hmm. that's a technique, right? Being able to be present for what is as it is in the moment and not be hyper-reactive, right? Totally. So just that practice in and of itself has been bled into my day-to-day life. So Mm. if you are having a quiet time practice or a meditation practice, you will be presented with thoughts, feelings, and things. They'll come and go, right? And some of them will be pleasant and some of them won't. And so it attunes me to just notice, acknowledge, really kind of release, not in a bypassing way. It's just, I'm not riding the mind train. I'm not riding, um, I'm not attaching to any one thing. And that big witnessing of what's happening in my awareness without, from a place of neutral and non-judgment has helped me in day-to-day life, be able to witness my behaviors and witness what I'm doing and witness Mm. when I'm looking for safety or witnessing when I need to when I want to hide from something that's occurring. And rather than, you know, Emily 10 years ago would have been very critical of myself and the mistakes that I've made. Now I have a lot more compassion for it. I'm like, oh, you're doing that thing. Oh, emo Emily is here doing that thing again. Okay. (laughs) Like, let's give her some love and then not be so critical about it. Um, And it does cultivate this ability to be observe 
you, like observe how you're acting and be like, why are you doing that? Like, what you doing yeah. over there? Yeah. <laughs> huh. And be yeah. curious about your own self and your mm. own behavior. Um, we're all fascinating people, right? Like, and we're going to, the person we're going to get to know, really get to know, there's only one, us. We can yeah. try to get to know our loved ones and the ones around us, but we can never walk in their shoes or truly know what's going on inside of them. We get mm. that through ourselves. And the more we can hold space for the, what's going on within ourselves, the greater capacity we have it to do it with other people. So it really does start with, can I give this to me? And if I can do it for me, then I can probably show up for another person. And I always say to people, pay attention to how people talk about themselves and treat themselves. This is telling mm. you a lot about how they're going to show up for you. Ooh, that's interesting. I like that. I I feel like it really makes you think about like, what have I been like that people <laughs> perceive, uh, especially in the past, because I, I see sort of the former versions of myself to your point. And you're like, same, mm -hmm. you can still be confronted with that. It absolutely yep. lingers. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that's really important for people to understand too, is that we evolve a lot. And also that doesn't mean that we aren't still either challenged or um, confronted with certain parts of who we are mm -hmm. that have either not been healed or mm -hmm. for whatever reason still linger. Because, I mean, to the point of the conversation earlier around like sort of being in a place of like deep trauma or, or yeah. in, um, you know, like a hypervigilance in your nervous system yes. dysregulated, it's like there are times where. I don't know. I, I would like to believe that that could all like fade into the background and I don't really ever feel it. But the reality is, is that like the experiences that I had in my life happened. Mm -hmm. And so shy of having a like eternal sunshine of the spotless mind moment where it all gets zapped away. Like I, I don't think that there will ever be like zero feeling about these things that I've no. experienced. Right. Yeah. And I think when you consider how you connect to yourself. Like yeah. for me to be in a place of like peace and understanding and calm um, to help myself work through those feelings is really valid. And I, I do feel like cultivating a practice of meditation and gratitude, especially yeah. has been massively instrumental in getting myself to where I am now anyway, plus the support of people, yeah. which is like the ultimate, I think, thing that we need as we're navigating through this life. So it's like oh, yeah. to be in touch with yourself, know yourself enough to be able to ask for what you need and the support that you have around you or find that support. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I think we don't learn and grow and heal in the absence of others. We need each other to do that. We do. Um, we can do a lot of things on our own, but we're not meant to do everything on our own. That was never the point. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to tell you about how we all have some trauma, right? Everybody's been through stuff. Yeah. And what I would say is for me, I, I, it through my spiritual growth and actually developing my mediumship that came up for me, like all the stuff. Mm. I am a great emotional bypasser. I can put it in a package and file it away and suppress it like nobody's business. And I had a healing experience. It's called trance healing. That's something that we learn, um, that I learned about and have had development in, and I was receiving it. And so tr there's all kinds of mediumship. I don't know if you know that. There's like mental mediumship, I'm... physical mediumship, trance okay. mediumship, and they're all different kind of s states of awareness. But in trance mediumship, a medium will allow one of their spirit guides to completely blend with them. And through the medium, this spirit guide will give healing to the person that they're sitting with. And the way that I learned it, we didn't do any talking. There's no talking. There's no nothing. The medium came in this is a person I'm in community with that we've done training and development and learning with and I have a tremendous amount of respect for her. And she comes in and we sit for 20 minutes and she's like, are you ready? I was like, I guess so. I don't know if I believe yeah, okay. in this, whatever, but you know, no harm. So you, was, so you were skeptical going into this? Hell yeah. And okay. so her guide blunt, even though I've had many miraculous experiences, that's my default state. Show me, prove it. Like, I don't believe it. Like I totally, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know about this stuff. Um, always skeptical, but curious, like we talk about, but she, I felt her guide come in blend with her. She looked different. I was like, Oh, something, something's happening. And then I just, and like, felt fell into a calm state. I wasn't really meditating. I was honestly just sitting there. 
And I felt energy touch me right on my chest, just like this presence. I didn't feel like presence. I felt like a hand go boop on my chest and it just unlocked all this fear and pain and anger I had stored in my body. It just wow. opened it up and I just started weeping. It just all came out like it, it purged from my physical body. This sounds like kind of terrible, but it wasn't. It made me realize how much I had stuffed down my m- emotions that I had deemed undesirable and how mm. much that was inhibiting my ability to fall into deep connection with spirit. And mm. so it just opened up and like poured through me and then we closed out the session. And then for the next two weeks, I just canceled all my clients. I took that time I needed to do some deep self work around things that had happened to me that needed my love and that needed my attention. So my relationship to the parts of me that are a little complicated, angry in pain, hurting changed instead of saying, go away, I don't want to see you. I said, okay, I'm going to make time for you. I'm going to be with you. I did have a therapist that helped, you know, that I was working with at the time to help me with that. Uh, I needed it, frankly. So I was very blended with what was going on. And she helped me hold space for that and taught me some techniques to help me be present for some of these things. And it was probably one of the biggest turning points in my entire life. And now I have this ability to hold space, not just for my complicated emotions, but for other people's complicated emotions and and help them to heal. And so I feel like that trance healing actually gave me a tremendous gift. And it makes me think of that Mary Oliver poem. I can't remember it exactly, but she's like, my friend gave me the box of darkness or something. And that too was Mm. a gift. Forgive me, Mary. I don't nice. go to that wrong. But um, I was like, oh wow, and 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 so it's not just all pretty, you know. Love, I feel connected. Sometimes it brings up things that are our shadow that live in our unconscious or subconscious. And by the way, talk about dreaming. The fact that you stop dreaming during that stressful time is really normal. Like that's what yeah. <laughs> that's what happens because. Um, I feel like our dreams are the place where we get to explore or things are expressed that we would never think about in our waking mind. It's where the the things can kind of be like, hey, run wild and and show us different things. So I feel like dream work can be really, really potent and powerful. And so I just wanted to also offer to you having a period where the dreaming stopped just kind of is, is very interesting to me that it stopped during that time, but not surprising at all. Yeah, well, I appreciate all of that. And I, I have so much gratitude for everything that you're sharing and particularly uh, really in, within your own experience articulating like, you know, I don't come in with just this like belief that it's all all real, all valid, whatever, like you're you're wanting to understand so you can cultivate your own practice, decide what resonates with you and what doesn't. Yeah. I feel like in my own experience and particularly um, like Nicole's really good at what she does in terms of like making it feel accessible, making it feel safe to me. Um, mm-hmm. She like just off the cuff came up with this like guided meditation the other day when we were sitting down and I was like, you're like really good at this. Like this is, <laughs> I was like, I think this is how you felt when you heard me podcasting maybe. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that this is like, you have like a gift that like I didn't understand was was here Mm -hmm. and I was just able to imbibe it and be witness to it in Mm -hmm. a way that it wasn't about oh this is my partner and and we're doing something together it was like just be present in the moment and she like took me on this and it was pretty brief but like this journey being like that really connected with me and something that she always says is like I really want people to feel like take what resonates and leave what doesn't because I'm not trying to tell you what to think or how to, how to be. And she's very early on in, Mm -hmm. in what she's doing. She's been connected for like a real long time, but she's also kind of pushed it away and now she's embracing it more Mm -hmm. again. And one of the things that I kind of wanted to ask on her behalf, Mm -hmm. um, and for anybody listening who might who might be in a very similar position where like you feel connected, but you don't really know what to do with that. Yeah. Um, you'd mentioned like it, there being value in finding community. So like, how did you actually end up finding community mm-hmm. where you could cultivate with other people rather than having this isolated experience? Well, um, I knew I needed it, um, because there was a lot I didn't know 
Um, like I said, I didn't even know I was a medium. I fell into accidentally in a session with a client, like not probably how you want that to happen. And they're like, Oh, I'm pretty sure you're tar- like connected to somebody who's not there. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. I'm psychic, but I can't do that. And they're like, so well, the person you were with called you out on it. <laughs> yeah. She was like, I think you're tapped in and connected to somebody because you're giving me, it was highly accurate information from a spirit communicator that they knew they were giving me all the information. And she's like, that feel and I was describing a person and like that that's my so and so and that they're not on the, the planet anymore. And I'm like, what? She's like, Yeah, you're connected to someone on the other side. Luckily she was excited about it. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. Well, <laughs> also though she brought it up to you. Like that's actually really cool that like she's um like what a what a turning point I, moment for somebody to, to say, be like, I observed this. Yeah, and but you know, I have just been able to work with some of the most awesome people. I don't know how it happened. Maybe it's just the intention that I set for Blooming Wand or whatever, the work that I do, but I've just gotten to work with amazing people. And I've always been very clear where I'm at in the process. And I was like, here's the skill set that I have. Here's the intention behind the work. Here's what I'll do. And mediumship was not on that list. Like, Mm. not at all. Like, I didn't walk around as a kid seeing dead people or sensing them. That wasn't me. I, I definitely had knowings, but, um, I it wasn't like that. And when it happened, I was like, oh my God, I don't want this to be randomly happening to me in session. I need to like figure this out. Well, because I think it can be started startling and like disarming in a way, it feels like. <laughs> I was surely shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I can tell you that in the moment I was so in the flow, I knew yeah. something felt different. And I was like, whoa, I'm just getting really good at being psychic. Woohoo. And then they're like, nope, this is something else happening. And psychism and mediumship are two different modalities. I think that's another thing people don't know. Um, is psychism is like me and who I'm working with and I'm tapped into their energy and I get information that way. There's not a link to a spirit communicator. Mediumship is me, the sitter, the spirit communicator, and the spirit communicator gives me all the information everything Mm. that I need. I'm not really, I'm connected to my sitter, but not the way I would be in a psychic session. So they're kind of different. And I guess on some level, I must have known that because I drew the line in the sand and said, I am not a medium. I remember telling people that because they always assume if you're psychic, you're a medium. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm psychic. I'm not a medium. I can't do spirit communication. Well, I guess you do it enough years. You, you know, I think like I said, you, your skill set can evolve yeah. and mine did. And so I didn't know where to go to get training. I, I didn't, I mean, I know that there's the Arthur Finley school of um, like psychism and mediumship or psychical studies or whatever in England, but I, I can't fly to England and <laughs> stay there for a couple yeah, yeah, of yeah. weeks, things like that. I'm like, where do people go? And then I looked around in my community, but I like, I have a really strong set of values. Like, and what I feel is important in spiritual practices. It's not a cut and dry thing, but I just kind of knew the type of values that I was looking for and I couldn't find it anywhere. And so, you know what? I just said a prayer. I'm like, Hey, spirit, you're here. You brought me to this. Find my, help me find my community. Yeah. (laughs) And I did like, I found the Oak Bridge Institute. I didn't have never even heard of them. And it's run by medium Michael Mayo and Megan Elisa. And it was just such a grounded, practical, like, I went to a practice circle, did okay, and then went in and did more classes and development. It's just a great community of people. Everybody's at a different level and skill and ability. You, We practice together. We play together. We cry together. We do all the things. But it gave me a safe place to learn and grow where I could fall down, do not do things correctly. Yeah. Um, and learn from those mistakes in a safe setting where we were all students practicing on each other. So nobody was expecting anybody to be perfect or anything like that. So it was a really, really safe place. And, um, I think that they do an exceptional, the more I reflect on it, I've been studying with them for three years and I'm just finishing up, um, where they've connected me with more public reading so I can do, Starting in August, I'll be doing three public readings a week, and then we kind of reflect on those readings because their whole mission is to provide a high standard of care, to elevate the level of care people can expect when they seek out services like this. And I'm like, Mm. I'm on board with that because it's all over the place. Like you never, you know, you might get a good medium like you did, or you might not. I mean, I've seen some things and that I wish I hadn't in the industry. And it's like, I'm like, yeah, we need to 
we need to raise the standard of care and we need to be able to demonstrate a high level of care to people because it is delicate work and we want to to be helping people not harming people and the frankly the industry has done a lot of harm and there yeah. there's there's harm being done and so we can't necessarily <laughs> stop people from doing things that we know are not appropriate. Um, but we can say, Hey, here's another way. Yeah. Look well, at this. It, it, that's sort of like the way, um, it is with most things I would say. Yep. And I, and I like that you refer to it as a, like the standard of care and referring to the care that you provide, because I feel like that's the other thing that really gives more of a sense of understanding and accessibility to acceptance of yeah. practices because I feel like that is what people are seeking, mm -hmm. but it, we have such a sort of specific view of what it means to get care. And so we yeah. have like Western medicine and then we have more holistic health, but then there's mm -hmm. sort of this other realm of like, I wouldn't necessarily put this in like holistic health, like sort of medicinal mm -hmm. or like, um, mm -hmm. you know, physical sort of holistic health. This is like a, a different level. It's a different type yeah. of care that's being provided. Yeah. And I think that, if we really consider what is it that, you know, why do people desire this? Mm -hmm. It's because they, they are seeking help or guidance mm -hmm. and um, a sense of understanding. And mm -hmm. to me, it's almost like, it, it's sort of like the mental, physical, spiritual, mm -hmm. emotional health. Like it's like, yeah. that's, there's the combination of all the different things that you do. And you had mentioned yeah. working with a therapist as well. Like yeah. I'm a huge advocate for therapy. I, yeah. It has done wonders for me and it has opened me up a lot mm -hmm. to be able to feel more connected and want to access spirituality. And I'm lucky yeah. that my therapist, is open-minded as well, because then I don't dialogue a ton about my spirituality with her, but um, mm -hmm. she'll invite certain conversations in as well and mm -hmm. like sort of pressure test with me to be like, well, is yeah. this something that you've considered too? And I, I like that there's the opportunity to co-mingle the things that I feel are helping me rather than feel like it has to sort of be an isolated uh, type of care that's being provided. What's interesting to me is though I am not a therapist, I'm not trained in that way. I did seek out training to become trauma informed and learn some things about the way the brain works and behavioral mm -hmm. stuff. I didn't have to do that, but I did because I wanted to be able to provide this high standard of care. But I work with a lot of therapists. That's like a third of my business is therapists, which I think is so interesting that they come to me. And I like that a lot. I know there's an overlap. And I think that there's definitely an overlap of the two kind of fields, which I'm very curious about. But um, one of the things that I feel why that occurred is because what is therapy about? Your awareness. What is this intuition about? Your awareness and where it goes and why it goes there and why am I be doing those things? So it's all kind of, got, it's got similar under undertones to it. Yeah. Obviously, I wouldn't diagnose or do anything like that, but um, I can help people connect with their intuition and understand more about their awareness and how to observe it and to be present for things, which is my favorite thing to do. Most people that work as psychics and mediums do like one and done sessions, which obviously with mediumship, I think that's appropriate. You connect with the spirit communicator, you give the message and people probably can, would want to, to move on after that. Psychism mm -hmm. is a little different. You might be diving into some deep personal stuff and they might need support after that, either through a therapist or through I, I help people with that, but it's my favorite thing to work with people over time. So they get the sense of their intuitive sense and how it works for them. Just using yeah. the tools and techniques that I know. And, and it's just like, I love doing that because I wish I had that. I wish yeah. I had had that at a much younger age and at a different time in my life, things could have been very different. And I think for me, I probably, nobody modeled these things, these skills and abilities. Right. I, I never had, you know, just wasn't really talked about all that much. And yet I was a child moving through the world, picking up on all this information and knowing things before they happen. Yeah. Um, and not, and, and thinking everybody did it and then realizing, no, not everybody's doing that. And then it made me feel alone. It made me feel like a weirdo. There was points in my life where I thought maybe I'm kind of crazy, like what's going on. And that well, was scary. You know, yeah. that was kind of scary. And so that's why I'm like, oh, community is so important and finding the right community for you is, can be very, very helpful. Yeah. And I feel like I really connect to that sense of like 
wishing that, you know, they, certain things existed because like it would have been really advantageous to have this on your personal evolution. Yeah. And I also think there's this really valuable reality that like, because you learned it when you did how you did, you're showing up the way that you are and mm -hmm. now you're offering that. Right. So there's a whole, like create the thing that you wish you had and, exactly. and you're doing that. And I really admire that. And mm -hmm. I also have a question on a personal mm -hmm. level about mm -hmm. like, because, because of what you do and, and how you help people in this regard is like, so something that I don't necessarily understand or experience myself. Like, I think I understand it more objectively, but I don't know how I would even begin to sort of explore this for myself is the mm -hmm. idea of like connecting with spirit guides in some yeah. way. And I know that, um, you know, to your point, it's sort of like, where are you on your journey and like mm -hmm. how, how open and receptive are you? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about like what it looks like to, um, sort of start on that journey to connect with spirit guides? Yeah. Um, I always tell people when you begin this journey to just accept the experiences you have for what they are, like, don't try to make them anything that they aren't by putting a mental narrative over the experience. So, mm -hmm. um, like a lot of people want to name their spirit guides or have them look a certain way. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. But my approach is a little different. So when you're having your quiet time alone, you know, and you're in that kind of soft state and you know that you're kind of feeling safe and secure in your meditation spot or whatever, maybe it's mm -hmm. outside by a tree or doing whatever, um, you just ask them to come close. <laughs> yeah, I will. I mean, and, and then, but I will say that it's subtle it's very subtle, but like I talking about it now, so I can feel I have one that comes close and I, they kind of have a signature essence. I know the way they feel. Um, sometimes they have a color associated with them. And this one has a lot of like white energy associated with them. It does feel like a sturdy presence that usually comes up from me from behind. And I know when I feel that I know that I'm connected and I know that I'm in the flow and that what I feel is so like I can feel it right now a tremendous amount of support a tremendous amount of love and a tremendous amount of compassion for me and it's sort of like what do you whatever you need right now is available to you and I'm here for you it makes me mm -hmm. feel safe and secure it makes me feel seen and mm. I feel so I feel like a sense of familiarity with the energy, even though it's like, I can't see this entity or anything like that. Right. It's not Gandalf, you know, I'm not going to describe it as, Oh, it looks like this or that. Maybe it does. But for me, to me, the most important thing is, do I feel their essence with me? Yeah. Am I familiar with that and cultivating a familiarity with it? You probably have more than one guide, you know what I mean? Right. And they'll, and like I told you about the essence thing, when someone walks in the room, you're like, Oh, that they have that vibe. That's what they have. And you kind of learn when you're in that passive state and the, your sphere of awareness becomes soft and broad, you'll feel something and you can say, yeah. come closer and they will come closer to you. And they can even like blend with your body a little bit. And I know that sounds kind of freaky and weird, but it's actually really not. It's pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty practical. Um, and I usually, if clients ask me about that, I have an exercise that I do with them and usually there's a lot of emotion around it. The thing that I felt challenged by or unsure of, and I'm glad that you explained it the way that you did is because I don't think like I'm a very visual person when it comes mm -hmm. to things spiritually. Like I don't mm -hmm. get, like it doesn't appear to me. Yeah. I have very strong visualizations when I have context for things. I'm not great at organically drumming up what a right. vision of something is without mm -hmm. like any awareness. Whereas my wife has like a super creative brain and she can just sort yeah. of see things. And I'm like, spiritually or otherwise, mm -hmm. she has the ability to connect it with like a visual, uh, a vis visualization. Yeah. For me, there is very much an energetic component, as you said, like yes. with all of us. But like until I met Nicole, I never told anybody about this because I was like, I feel like a weirdo. I feel like I'm mm -hmm. like, a, I'm off the rails here maybe. Yeah. But I, af after losing my friend, Mike, when I was 16, 
there would be moments where I would be like laying in bed and I would kind of like just put like my hands up in the air. So I'm like laying on my back. I could feel Mm -hmm. the presence, but I was like, I'm making this up. Over time, like I was realizing like, no, no, there's like a very palpable energy. You can literally feel it. Yeah. (laughs) You know? And so I've allowed myself to explore that more Mm -hmm. since we've known each other because Mm -hmm. I feel safe to do that. Yeah. But this gets back to your point about like, it can be very isolating because you're experiencing these things and you don't know how to cultivate it. And you're not even really entirely sure if it's a thing. So then like, you're like, I'm just experiencing this in like whatever limited capacity I allow, given my knowledge on the information. Absolutely. Versus I am open, I'm Mm -hmm. passive and receptive. And it's funny because when I was telling you about the medium experience that I had where my friend Mike and and my mom came through, Mm -hmm. she had made a comment that Mike was the one who made this happen with you and Nicole, Mm -hmm. basically, Mm -hmm. because we had like a very um, sort of obscure meet cute situation happen. Mm -hmm. It was right after, shortly after losing my mom. And -hmm. I would say like, oh, like my mom, my mom brought us together. I really feel like we Mm -hmm. talked about work. I feel like my mom played a part and Mike's, um, you know, since been uh, gone probably almost 20 years at that point. A long time. And my mom actually always felt really close to Mike. And when mm-hmm. I played soccer, when I was in high school, we won the state championship. My mom's like, I swear Mike was sitting on top of that goalpost, like the whole mm-hmm. time that you were there. And I get like, yeah. oh, I get like an intense feeling thinking yeah. about it. It was so nice to have this sort of validated, you're connecting with these people, these spirits that I really care about. And I mm-hmm. know that they had a connection. And so there's mm-hmm. this feeling of I'm not totally delusional. Like the mm-hmm. things that I'm feeling, the things that I'm sensing are, mm-hmm. are valid. Mm-hmm. And I think the other thing in saying this out loud in this moment that I'm hearing it is don't feel like you have to dismiss it because you're worried what other people are going to think about it. Absolutely. It's not as unusual as we make it out to be. It's more just that it's, it's been spoken about with, excuse me, with some sort of judgment, I think for a long time Mm -hmm. that we have to allow ourselves to understand that like, Mm -hmm. it might not be received by all people, but that Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's not happening for you. Right. I swear I kind of cold came up with the phrase, like, just accept it for what it is. Like, you yeah. know what that experience meant to you. You know what it felt like. You felt the connection. Accept yeah. it for what it is. It doesn't need to necessarily be understood by the mind. I know that that's a weird thing for us, but a lot I of this, <laughs> especially with psychism and mediumship, our mind is going to want to step in and make it make sense And I think we have, there's that dance, like, okay, mind, I know you want to do this, but I know what that felt like for me. I know, like my trans healing thing, like, I know what that experience felt like for me. I'm not going to dismiss it. I've chosen not to dismiss it. It had such a profound impact on my life. It was for me. And I share it with other people who, in case they've had experiences like that, but I also tell them, take it for what it is for you. Maybe it'll help you. Maybe it won't. And one of the things I wanted to also loop back to is about the visualization thing. Some Mm -hmm. people are really visual. And how I've always approached it is if I'm working psychically or mediumistically, for me, the visual has to be connected with the feeling or another clear sense. Then I know it's not the mind because visuals Mm. can be from the mind. Now, I will also say that I love playing with visuals and using the imagination as a healing modality (laughs) using like visualizations and guided meditations as I think whether it's the mind or your imagination or not people can go on journeys with that that can be very helpful to them so I I do I do think there's something to that um, that can be very helpful but I'm very careful about visuals when I'm working psychically or mediumistically because it can Mm -hmm. just be a tape that my mind is like bloop and stuff through so yeah I kind of am like, I see something, I feel something and I say something and I have to kind of roll, roll with, roll yeah. with that. Um, and cause I will say one of the things I did learn in development and I would say all my friends and that we worked with, that I've been working with would say the same thing. When we just go off visuals, we're wrong. <laughs> it's usually not accurate. It's usually not so we were that was always like connect it to another clear sense and then you can be sure about the visual and I Mm. it kind of made me be scared of visuals for a while but now I'm kind of past that and one of the things that came up for me a mentor was watching me work and they were like you need to move faster you need to work a lot faster and I was like but I need to make sure I'm tapped and I was like kind of going slow and I realized I'm really clear cognizant like I just get information. I just somehow know it. There's no visual. And sometimes there's like, there is a feeling like you better spit this out and say it. That's more the feeling that I get. And I was like, but 
clear cognizance is weird because where that information come from and how did I like I'm getting it from a spirit communicator or whatever, but like it's a very weird kind of clear sense because you just I get think- information, information. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Okay, but oh, if I move fast and I say what comes, that's when I'm the most accurate. When I'm oh, hemming that's really and interesting. and like, oh, I need to really feel into this, I'm less accurate. But when I go, 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 give what I get, quick, 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 I've realized that I'm more accurate. So I've had to work on my confidence around that. Like, say it, I'm a lace, but I don't. Because yeah, yeah. I'm getting to the point now where I get really uncomfortable if I don't say these random things that come to me. Because it doesn't make any damn sense to me. Makes sense right. to my sitter, but to me, I'm like, what the, what, the, what is this? <laughs> what? Yeah. What well, am I it, about to say? <laughs> well, it's interesting that you say that too, because this is um, partially why I asked the question that Nicole mm-hmm. had prompted around, like, well, how do you know to like trust yourself? Because I think she gets a lot of downloads where she's like, I don't know where that came exactly. from, but I just know it. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> And I think that for her, it's like really learning to trust that more. I I mean, same thing for myself. It's just that we're at different stages of like where we are and, and how we connect. Well, and the way you guys connect is different. You're different. Hey, oh, you've got for different, sure. You've got different styles. And that's why I always tell people like, don't like listen to people's stories and how it works for them. But yours will be different. Like every, it's different for everybody. Yeah. And that's actually really freaking cool. I like it because then it gives you more perspective, you know, and I, it's, I remember when I walked into the medium, um, and it was within the first probably couple of minutes even of being there. And she, like one of the first things she had said to me was like, you like really feel people's energies. Like you do. Yeah. (laughs) With it, without even like a hesitation. And I thought that's so interesting because it's something that I've always really felt truly Mm -hmm. to myself, but to have it articulated to you by somebody. And then I've had, I've spoken with other people who are or mediums or psychics who have said the same thing to me. And I'm like, okay, so there's something coming off of me that like yeah. give, give, that, give, that gives this awareness to people. But it's, I think, further validating to hear that from people who are in tune with their practice and like mm-hmm. can be witness that because I think it offers you space to like explore it a little more rather than feel resistant to it. Well, it's a cool it's something that's really cool about you. And I feel like it's kind of a superpower for you. And that doesn't mean that it's always feeling like that. Like it can be (laughs) hard to be that in tune with people's energies. Um, and, but it can also just be a really practical thing that you can use in your life, right? With your podcasting, with everything. It's like, you know who you vibe with and who you don't, and you can trust that. And like I said, it's not passing judgment. doesn't mean you have to be like, oh, that person doesn't feel right for me. They must be quote bad. They just might be the right person for you to be talking to. That's all, you know, move on to the next thing. You don't have to, we don't have to make it like a grand judgment or anything like that. It can just be like, that's not for me on to the next thing and just trust that and, and know that. And I think trust in yourself and in like the way that your intuitive abilities move through, through you is big. And that's something that has to be constantly cultivated and reevaluated. Believing that it's really happening is another thing. (laughs) It's like, Oh, I do believe this. And I, because the truth is it is an inherent part of every human being and it isn't woo woo and we can all cultivate it. Like I said, I wasn't born as a medium. I learned it. I learned how to do this. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. So I think that that's the thing. And I will point out two schools of thought around this. So there are people out there that'll say, I'm gifted. I didn't have to get any training and development. That makes me better at it than other people. And then there's others that are like, I kind of had it and I developed it and I got better at it. Or I had no skill and ability and I went from nothing to being able to do all these things. And so some people will lean towards like, oh, the people that were born this way or whatever are better. But I'm I'm like, I don't know that one is necessarily better than the other, <clears throat> but I will say that if I'm looking for a practitioner, whether they're like, I was just born this way or I've developed it, I'm looking for, have you sought out intentional training and development? Because if you didn't and you just had the skill and ability, there's a higher likelihood that you haven't had experiences where you aren't putting your biases onto people. Does that make sense? Mm, so, do you see oh, what yeah. I mean? You've, you, you, you've never worked with somebody bigger, better, faster, stronger, then how do you know you're not doing certain things, right? So um, 
Well, it's an interesting point to make about the bias as well, because I feel like to your point, I mean, even just the, the comment you made earlier about being like, OK, like I'm a white female, I'm privileged. Well, we all have inherent bias. So like yep. having to sort of check some of those things at the door yep. when it comes to anything in our lives, quite honestly. But like yeah. spiritually, it starts with the awareness and then it's the mm -hmm. decision of, OK, well, now that I'm aware of this, like how does that impact my practice and how I'm moving forward in the way that I do this? And I think oh, if you yeah. don't ever if you're never confronted with somebody sort of acknowledging that or, or acknowledging yeah. it to yourself, then you're going to just do what, what you feel, which is right. fine, but, mm -hmm. but there might be limitations to that because of what you're not addressing. Absolutely. And I will say that, um, there's a fair amount of self-work that has to happen con pretty consistently for me <laughs> to be able to strive to not have my biases enter into readings but I am mm. a human being and they will, that will happen. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll need to own it. I mean, I mean, it's going to happen. It will happen. It, 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 it's just inevitable to some degree, but I'm always, that my intention is to not let that happen. But I also know that there's a possibility that it could, and someone might call me out on that. I'm okay yeah. with that. I, I would want that. And I would give an example of <clears throat> how bias can show up. There was recently a pretty famous psychic medium who's on TikTok who told a grieving woman who had lost her sister that her sister was in purgatory and she needed to light a candle for her. Well, nobody, like... That's not true. Like the spirit, when we all kind of go to the same place in spirit, and this is another, like there's another trailhead that which is what happens to bad people but we'll just stick on this note but oh i i'm guaranteeing you that this is not the only conversation we're having podcast yeah, or otherwise there is so the, i what won't put a pin in that one to deal with complicated people who've passed into spirit because not everybody's delightful right well I, this, well I guess i was going to ask like how yeah. how that comes through but we'll i'll put a pin in that and maybe we'll uh we'll we'll spend some more time together <laughs> yeah we'll have to loop back on that one because that's a whole conversation too but this idea of purgatory comes from a specific religious practice and right. that the medium was then putting on to the sitter who may or may not even believe in that right so there's an example of a bias mm. coming into a reading and probably making the sitter feel pretty bad hearing your sister's trapped in purgatory and you need to light a candle to help her transition out of that mm. she gave yeah. a lot of valid information like your sister's here da, da 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 so it made it but then it got mixed in with bias do you see what i mean and that's where yeah, you that's have so to be interesting. careful about who you're working with well, because like, I mean, even to that point, too, like if you're somebody who practices this, but then also you have the context that you have is rooted in like the bias that you have, not yeah. even necessarily wittingly, because I would also refer to that in between stage as purgatory. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. was raised Catholic. That's what you would call it. So it's the language, as you're saying. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And a lot of the <clears throat> work that I've done has been around the language that I use to describe what's coming through to me mm. in a way that is helpful to the person that I'm working with, if that makes sense and free of kind of some of these biases. And that's trick. That's a skill. <laughs> that's a skill in and of itself. Yeah. Um, that is really important to, to cultivate. And so um, that's something that I, I'm constantly evaluating and, and working on. And that's why in development, they, when we have our sitters permission, they always ask us to record this, the sessions and watch them, watch ourselves back because you want to learn, how do I say things? Is there a better way that I could say that? Because sometimes when we're working, we don't remember. Well, that's, that's another a, thing. It's like, I'm so tapped in, I'm spewing information, but I'm kind of gone. Like Emily's off to the side. I don't always remember everything that came up at a session and I'll come out of it and people will be like, Oh my God, you said all this stuff. It was so accurate. I'm like, I don't really remember all of that. Yeah. Well, that's intense. And I, why, well, cause I was going to ask you if um, you allow people to record or if you ever record. So we recorded like audio of my session, um, yeah. not video, but, but it was for me. So like yeah. I could go back and listen and kind of revisit yeah. and, and come back to that if anything came up, because there were a couple mm -hmm. of things where I was like, mm, I don't have context for that yet, but maybe. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's, it is interesting to kind of think about how something I wouldn't have considered is like the language that you're using to communicate. But I mean, it's as with, I mean, again, I'm going to kind of compare it to therapy in the sense of like, there are certain ways that you want to say things or not say things because it's going to give somebody space to 
experience it for themselves versus sort of dictating to them like what it is that they're Absolutely. getting from you. Ex- exactly. Like I, yeah, th- yeah, that's the thing. That's exactly, that's a perfect way of saying that. <laughs> I, Emily, I feel like I could talk to you for ages. I of know that we're we could, like yeah. <laughs> at the tail end of things here. I would like, I would just um, bog down the rest of your afternoon to go into these really insightful conversations. I appreciate so much how open you are, how much you've shared, and just the intent behind what you're doing to help people within your practice, but to come on to a show like this or into other podcasts and to offer your experience and your knowledge and give people a better understanding of like what's possible for each of us Mm -hmm. with connecting to ourselves in this way. Like it's so Mm -hmm. meaningful to me. I feel like this conversation has come at such the perfect time in my own life to be so receptive to it, to be inspired by it and to just really feel empowered to give myself more opportunities to like follow those nudges that I'm getting and trust myself a little bit more and cultivate that myself. I just really, really appreciate you being here and for all that you do and all that you are. Oh, thank you. So thank you so much. And I can say the same, the same about you for just creating an environment where it's easy for me to, you know, talk about some of these ideas and things like that. That's, that's, that's important too. It allows me to show up in an authentic way. And I appreciate that. And I value that. Thank you so much. I, I can't wait to chat with you again, but (laughs) in the meantime, I know that, um, you know, if anybody wants to reach out and find out more about what you're doing, they can visit bloomingwand.com and I'll have that in the show notes, but is there anywhere else you want them to follow or find you? That's pretty much, pretty much it. I do have the blooming wand podcast, um, that I do as well, but everything, everything's right there on the website. And there are lots of free tools for people as well in the Blooming One store. And then I have a little free members area um, that has a course that people can take. It's short about psychism, mediumship, and tarot. So part of kind of raising the standard of care for me is education and providing tools and things that people can use for free with no paywall so they can try some things out and experiment on their own. Oh, I love that so much. And I, that's, so generous and thoughtful and meaningful. I think for people who, especially if you're feeling skeptical and you're like, well, I don't necessarily like want to invest, but I want to investigate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cause like we're all there. Right. And I just, I don't know. I don't think everything needs to be behind a paywall. Yeah. I, I feel you on that. And I, I, One last time, want to say thank you. Gang, thanks so much for joining me for this week's episode. I just appreciate your support and it means so much to me that you tune in week after week. The best thing that you can do to help spread the word about the podcast is if this episode resonated with you, go ahead and share it with somebody else wherever you listen to your podcasts, or you can go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and share it from there. I also really appreciate it if you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts because that really helps give people a better understanding of what the show's about and what you appreciate about the conversations that we're having. 